All right, this is a vacuum that I've been wanting for quite some time now. This is the Workhorse by WMJ Refurbishing Cyclonic Upright or a Workhorse Clear Track. Um, I got this vacuum cleaner unboxed yesterday. And over here is some bits and bobs of information. So WMJ Refurbishing. January 9th was my order date, and you can see over here, I did order a new workhorse. So this vacuum is essentially the CMS 1000, from what I understand, but made by Amway or by Bissell for Amway with the whole Dyson deal that fell through with Amway, but they still produce the machine. And lo and behold, to me, this is like the DeLorean of the vacuum cleaner market. It's, stump it's something they still make today with all the original parts. Um, you can purchase this refurbished. I think it's $329, and you spend an extra $100 for a brand new one. Now, like I've said in some of my previous videos with refurbished vacuums, I personally never know what I'm getting when I buy refurbished. Um, I think a lot of it has to do with what the box looks like as well. Um, sometimes machines will come with bits and pieces kind of all put together and you didn't actually receive all the things that you needed in order to use the vacuum. Um, I think Eureka does a very poor job with refurbishing their vacuums. This vacuum, though... Um, I'm sure that their refurbished are just as good um, as the brand new models, but I just wanted one that was, I, like, I wanted it brand, brand, brand new. I wanted me to be the first person to use it. So, in the box, the box is very small, by the way. I've seen other people's postings of, or posting of the unboxing of this machine, and their boxes came in a white box with like blue silhouette. Mine just came in a brown cardboard box. Um, I don't know if they purchased a refurbished machine, but um, I've only used this thing once and you can see it does have some dust in the dirt cup already. And I guess it's maybe better because I did post, tried to post six times the unboxing of this machine and my first use, my first impressions, it's like a 32 minute video and it will not upload, it will not upload. It has fought me six times. I do not know what's wrong with it. It just, it gets to about 12%. I think the highest it's gotten is like 47% and it just will not budge. Actually, no, the first time I tried to upload it, it did get to the, um, the <clears throat> final stage where it was just kind of like polishing it off and it it sat there for hours and it did nothing. So we're going to give it another whirl. Um, so, but anyway, I don't know if their machines were not brand new and maybe they got refurbished or maybe um, the packaging is just different now, but... Either way, I'm excited to have this in my collection. Um, on the back of the machine was another mistake I made yesterday. When I got it out of the box, the hose actually went this way and up and around. And then the end of the hose was over here. And I was like, this thing is not fitting correctly at all. Um, and then I was like, well, I guess I should probably switch it around and make the hose go straight up and over. It does have the filter on it, WMJ Refurbishing Center, Comstock Park, Michigan, your power switch. Um, <clears throat> nice long cord on this as well. And trying to think here, you do have a foot operated. You can use your foot to um, change this from tools to floor. The machine overall, like it's, it's not a very tall vacuum, but it's kind of strange because this part of the vacuum itself is actually um, quite tall. You can see like, 
the the majority of the handle is not very large right here it's well i shouldn't say large it's just not very tall the most of the machine is just body itself and um but it's very solid it's very well made um even rolling it across the floor the back wheels are rubber or they have a rubber coating almost feels like um they're made out of a vacuum cleaner belt but the front wheels that act as your carpet height adjustment do not, they are plastic. And yesterday these were in good condition, but just rolling them over the floor, um, they've picked up some like bits and pieces here. They're not scratched, they just have like white powdery substance on them. Made in the USA, the brush roll, it doesn't seem to catch a lot of hair, which is good. As in like it doesn't seem to accumulate a lot of hair. But the cleaning path on the vacuum is already small as it is. Just to give you guys an idea. Um, but the um, underside of the machine where the belt is, that eats up a lot of your room as well. So, I mean, it's even smaller. I wish this didn't exist here. I don't really feel that it's necessary, um, especially because it kind of splays these bristles anyway, so I wish that was kind of nixed. But the other problem that I've found, or just kind of, it's not necessarily a problem, but just a minor annoyance, is this bumper is kind of loose on the front of the machine. Um, it, it came this way, but it came kind of like detached in the front. You can easily lift that up and off. It's not that I don't think that it's made well. I just think um, it's very simplistic in its design, and which is great but that kind of makes it feel a little cheaper. Um, also, I really wish this was a little bit lower to the carpet. I don't think that it makes the greatest contact with the carpet. Um, it, it does groom very well, and it wheels across the carpet very easily. I just think that with the fact that the suction isn't super powerful and the airflow is not the greatest, um, <clears throat> it could do even better if it was a little bit closer to the carpet. However, it is very strange how something with average suction, average airflow, and average um, agitation still cleans the carpet exceptionally well. It's just kind of one of those things where, you know, you can do 33%, 33%, 33%, and end up with almost 100%. You know what I mean? Um you can make three things that are about average. Three, th three average things could make one excellent thing combined. So that's kind of what I'm getting at. Um, the one thing that I really have always liked about these, though, is I really like the shape. These, the shape of the cleaner head, especially when you recline it, um, is really cool looking. But the cleaner head itself, it just looks like a kid's drawing of a vacuum cleaner if they were to try and draw one. Um, very 80s, very 90s, a lot of um, <clears throat> vacuums back in the day had this very simple design. It looks like a door stopper that you would have like in school, like one of those wooden door stoppers or like a, like a piece of cheese that you would see next to a cartoon of a mouse. It's just kind of like that angular pointiness. And when you recline come on, the vacuum, it looks really cool as well. I just think that it's a neat look, a neat design to the vacuum. Um, what else? There's really not a lot to say. The cord is moderately long. It does have a three prong and this hose, the hose itself, if I can pull it around, it's a very interesting material very interesting. It's, it's rubberized. It, well, it feels rubberized, but it's ribbed. 
and it feels very strong, like a very strong material, and it's a smaller diameter. It's not super large at all. I mean, that really makes it look small, but um, it's not a huge diameter of um, a hose, which, you know, to each their own. And to undo the bin, that kind of just takes the, the relief off of it and you can twist it counterclockwise and this dumps out. Now, there's really nothing in the bin. This and the bottom here, this big center blue piece, I believe <clears throat> is really where some of your finer dust and dirt would get trapped in the center from this cyclone here. Um, once the dirt is separated inside the main cyclone. So there will be dirt and dust that cap or that gets um, captured in there. Now, I'm sure most people would assume that know anything about like a bagless um, cyclonic design, but not everybody. Some people who maybe are using this for a business, they're trying to see if this is a vacuum cleaner that's worth buying, but they don't really know um, much about how cyclones would work. So I believe this is a single cyclone unit. Oop, there was a little bit of dust and dirt in there. More like kitty litter. And then this twists out of there. And this is actually like a very solid plastic as well. So I'm going to push this back up in. Maybe. Uh-oh. Okay. So that's in place. The rubber gasket makes a seal here. But I will say, <clears throat> for a bagless machine, yes, it gets dirty like most bagless machines would, but you can easily pop that right off and clean it. You can take a microfiber towel and clean that all off. Very easy compared to something with multiple cyclones that are super small to get the finer dust. I understand why um, they're designed that way, but they're not always um, the easiest to clean. Now, my only gripe about this is if you look on the back here, you can see that the gasket is like rubbing up against right there. See how I'm bending the gasket? I feel like that is going to cause wear and tear over time on this machine. And that's probably my least favorite part about this bagless design. When I put the bin up into the machine, it's rubbing on that gasket and I can just see that causing an issue over time. Unfortunately, there's just no way around it. And it honestly fights me every time I try and put this into the machine. Um, I'd really like to know if other people have that same issue with their um, Amway or their clear track is that rubbing there and kind of bending the gasket. I just feel like over time with drying and cracking, that'll cause a leak or just kind of manipulating that gasket there. It'll cause a leak. So I'd really like to know if other people have that problem. And then you can see it comes with a schematic of all of your different parts that you can purchase with a part number and how much it costs. The most expensive part on here, I'm gonna guess, is the motor. It says motor kit with cord, and it's $143. That's really not bad. The cone assembly gasket O-ring is part number two. But the dust cup itself, um, which I think is four, is $32. So, but all the parts are, like I said, are readily available. But I picked this up because I don't want to miss out on being able to own one of these 
because you never know. They could end up going out of business in a year or two because it is an old design and it's just one of those things that over time, who's to say that they're going to still continue to be a profitable business because nobody really wants to buy these. Nobody really knows that they exist. Just giving you guys reference. And this honestly looks like this is the original manual to one of the older style models. I mean, they do say clear track workhorse on them, but they also have these um, cool metallic rings like the older models. They also, in this photo, have different height carpet pictures rather than saying low, medium, and high. And the workhorse logo is slightly different. So let's plug this in and give it a quick whirl around the carpet. One thing I like about buying vacuums like this is they feel new old stock to me. And I really like having something that I don't have to worry about catching on fire or um, something that's an older design that is going to cause me problems. Sometimes people get rid of vacuum cleaners because they heat up or start to make a bad noise or something over an extended period of time while using them. So I really don't take trash found vacuums because there's probably a good reason as to why it's in the trash. This also feels very nice here. So let's turn it on and see if any dirt flies inside just from messing with it. Now, yesterday when I used this, I vacuumed at a different angle, but you can really see how well um, it will stand the carpet up. It's almost like it just barely scoots itself across the carpet, but it's just actually very easy to push, even though the brush roll is making good contact with the carpet. Now, I think that it can scoop up or rake up parts of the carpet that aren't super matted down and make it look good but I don't think that it can revive like extremely matted areas or high traffic areas like this one here. You can literally see the difference from underneath the couch to where people put their feet all the time. And one of the things that I love about these older style cyclonic canisters like the Phantoms, this machine, some of the um, earlier 2000s models or even like the Hoover um, fusions, they 
don't have the little plastic fins in the bottom of the dust cup like certain manufacturers do now that prevent the dirt from continuously flying around in a cool circle. I think it's to trap and create less of a um, whirlwind inside the dust cup so the dirt will stay in place rather than continuously flying around because if it continues to fly around, you're increasing the chances of that dirt coming up into the smaller cyclones or the um, where they uh, they probably won't get filtered out or they're they're getting closer to the filters, I guess I should say. So I really think that those fins that they put into the bottom of the machines, even my Dyson DC07 has them. Um, if it's heavy stuff, it's not going to continue to fly around the bottom because of that design. And I'll show you guys here what I mean. I think you know. <laughs> it's making that sound. It's an interesting sound. <laughs> it sounds upset. I think it's just this filter. It's going... it's gone so yes it does a very decent job with vacuuming um very easy very simple and a very cost effective option for anybody who doesn't really want to have to pay for filters but i can't get over um how solid this thing feels very 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 strong could you convince somebody who's out going out and buying a shark you know with two three kids at home um no they would never want this thing because it's old fashioned. And I think that that's one of the big detachments <clears throat> with a lot of YouTubers saying about how nobody wants to buy a good vacuum cleaner these days, yada, yada. It's about the flashiness. Nobody wants to buy something that looks dated and old. Would you want to go and buy a brand new um, Ford Bronco that looks like a you know, 98 CRV? No, you wouldn't. So, I mean, and this is the perfect example. This is the most cookie cutter looking um, design on a vacuum. They used very generic colors and a very generic shape. But for those of us who do appreciate that sort of simplicity and tried and true design on anything, of course, we're going to be very e like a moth to a flame. So, but no, you're not going to be able to convince somebody who's, you know, younger and wants to follow trends and be able to say, oh, yeah, you know, I have a shark or I have a Dyson or this or that um, and convince them to even buy a Mila, especially when they see the price tag. So, um, some of you may know this, but is I'm, I'm pretty sure this is the old Amway logo. My parents were actually going to do some sales for Amway back in the 90s. But that is basically the video, you guys. Um, I'm hoping to do some more cleaning at some point with this. But I really just wanted to kind of give an introductory video out there and be able to, you know, show you guys, because this has been something I've wanted to cross off my list for quite a while now, and I've finally been able to do it. So please let me know if you guys have one of these machines and what you guys think of it and or um, if you know anything that I should know about this vacuum. So thanks for watching.